Hello, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our weekly meditations on the book of Revelation. This is week one. And so let's enter into this time together within the goodness of God, knowing full well that it is in him that we live and move and have our being. And so from a comfortable place, I invite you to repeat after me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. So today's reading is the first chapter of Revelation. A revealing of Jesus, the Messiah. God gave it to make plain to his servants what is about to happen. He published and delivered it by angel to his servant John. And John told everything he saw, God's word, the witness of Jesus Christ. How blessed the reader, how blessed the hearers and keepers of these oracle words, all the words written in this book. Time is just about up. I, John, am writing this to the seven churches in Asia province. All the best to you from the God who is, the God who was, and the God about to arrive, and from the seven spirits assembled before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, loyal witness, firstborn of the dead, ruler of all earthly things. Glory and strength to Christ, who loves us, who blood washed our sins from our lives, who made us a kingdom, priests for his father forever, and yes, he's on his way. Riding the clouds, he'll be seen by every eye. Those who mocked him and killed him will see him. People from all nations and all times will tear their clothes in lament. Oh, yes. The master declares, I'm A to Z. I'm the God who is, the God who was, and the God about to arrive. I'm the sovereign strong. I, John, with you all the way in the trial and the kingdom and the passion of patience in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of God's word, the witness of Jesus. It was Sunday, and I was in the spirit praying. I heard a loud voice behind me, trumpet clear and piercing. Write what you see into a book. Send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, and Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned and saw the voice. I saw a gold menorah with seven branches, and in the center the Son of Man, in a robe and gold breastplate, hair a blizzard of white, eyes pouring fire blaze, both feet furnace fired bronze, his voice a roar, right hand holding the seven stars, his mouth a sharp biting sword, his face a, bli a, a blinding sun. I saw this and fainted dead at his feet. His right hand pulled me upright. His voice reassured me, don't fear. I am first, I am last, I'm alive. I died, but I came to life and my life is now forever. See these keys in my hand, they open and lock death's doors. They open and lock hell's gates. Now write down everything you see, things that are, things about to be. 
the seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven branched gold menorah. Do you want to know what's behind them? The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The menorah's seven branches are the seven churches. The word of the Lord. So we are going to take a look meditatively at the book of Revelation. And whenever you enter into Revelation, you bring with it, no matter who you are, an understanding that there's a lot of baggage that goes with the Revelation. And there are a whole lot of folks, both now and in the past, who have liked to use Revelation for their own purposes, to to be able to push whatever their agenda is and to generally frighten folks into following the way they're trying to proclaim. We're going to approach Revelation a little bit differently. We're not going to use Revelation. Instead, Revelation is seeking to use us, for it is gospel. And so the purpose of this journey that will take several weeks of us uh, uh, meditating spiritually upon the words given to us in Revelation is that we may discover it as good news, gospel, for a world that is hungering for good news. It is good news for you, and it is good news worth cherishing. And it's given to us in such a, an amazing way. It, it can hit us in places that maybe uh, we just aren't hit when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I hope that by the end, you will thank God Almighty for the gift of revelation. So in order to engage in Revelation in that way, it needs to be seen through a lens of hope and understanding that when John of Patmos or John the seer is given uh, in the spirit this revelation and then writes it down and shares it, he is sharing it to a people who didn't have a whole lot of hope, who were hungering for good news, who were really ready to abandon this whole Jesus pro project um, and didn't really know if there'd be any hope at all. The persecution of the church was becoming too great and the great power of the Roman Empire was at its height. Surely we were doomed. The revelation says something quite different, quite different indeed. And so that message of hope is what we will seek as we go on this beautiful journey. It's put to us so well in this way. When, uh, when John the seer is given these images and, and he drops dead <laughs> uh, out of fear, um, this, this Jesus who loves him pulls him up and reassures him, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> Did you catch the way he looked? Eyes pouring fire blaze, both feet furnished fired bronze, his voice a roar. Ah, uh, I'd be afraid too. <laughs> but the word of God and the word of Christ is reassuring for us, for you. Don't fear. I am first. I am last. I'm alive. Yeah, I died, but I came back to life, and my life is now forever. <laughs> and this life is what he's looking to share with us. We are tied in to that life through baptism, through our faith. We are one with Christ. So that is a bit of the good news we are given already. I look forward to going on this journey with you. Know that the one who was first and last, A to Z, Alpha and Omega, <laughs> is with us and has welcomed us into his eternity. Now, just a word about the translation I'm using. Uh, in order to not be bogged down, there's all kinds of metaphors and images and numbers that we find in Revelation. Um, 
we're not going to be too focused on trying to decode numbers. The thing is, when it comes to decoding them at all, is so much of Revelation is grounded in the Old Testament. <laughs> it's simply lifting up these great images and ideas that are found in the Hebrew scriptures, and they're recast through the story, the gospel of Jesus. It's really as simple as that. And it is good news of the one who has conquered death, who has conquered everything uh, that could ever push us down. And so what I'm using is, I'm going to use Eugene Peterson's The Message Translation. Uh, let it pop for us a little bit. I, I don't agree with the, everything that he chooses to do, but overall, it, 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 it places us in the midst of a story, in the midst of a poem, the, the metaphors, um, in a way I think that has a lot of life to it. And so I hope that you'll enjoy that with me as we use the message here in the coming weeks. So God be with you in this journey. He's with you always until the end. Our light for our church is indeed shining bright because Christ is in our midst. And so let us pray. O living God, to turn away from you is to fall. To turn toward you is to rise, and to stand before you is to abide forever. Grant us, dear God, in all our duties, your help. In all our uncertainties, your guidance. In all our dangers, your protection. And in all our sorrows, your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.